Bro. You pick that up, please? That was a shitty throw. <clears throat> why can I not? I was going to say, why can I not pick that up or drop it? Hell yeah, Tom, you're a legend. Oh shit. I don't think I can jump or run or anything like that. At least not yet. Who's just leaving bo <clears throat> bottles of like unopened beer in an alley? Yeah. Gotta inspect this mug. What's a mug? Piss bottle. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's piss bottles. And I, uh. I'm using the same title I was using the one time I was gonna stream it. Just because I don't count that stream since I was tired, you know? I wanted the cheese, I don't want the mousetrap. <laughs> I was trying to get the cheese. How can you just do that to me? <clears throat> Crouch, control. Let's toggle, that's nice. Welcome ever just tuned in, you yes, sweet little baby you. <clears throat> We're just not getting this game started for real. Opening doors. Oh hell yeah. Can't read that. Oh. Some weird shit. <clears throat> I was hoping you'd just start from the very beginning. Yeah, I was definitely gonna start from the very beginning because, like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I I didn't retain any of that information. I remember some of the stuff that people were saying, kind of, but I don't even really remember that, so... You, uh, you hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or... I don't know. Oh, I made one! Forrest, is this a joke? Oh! No, I... I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But, I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? Why is this the one thing you're throwing fucking anyway, super fucking high, but the other shit you were throwing like a little baby? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for oh. the show. And he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want what did to... What even hit? Let's skip the checks this time. No, we're doing the checks. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Oh! Buckle in, folks. We're about to if that doesn't make you want to... <laughs> let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay, MBS. Oh, baby, we're three. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy.
Got it. Well. Great. Now <sighs> turn it off. All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now come on, the Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain for. I was gonna say I, I pressed the button. Such an unfun turkey. <laughs> I'm a turkey now, am I? An unfun <laughs> turkey. <laughs> what is this like Minnesota? That's an easy one. The sound plaster. That it? Well, that's like something. Sound blaster. Front of the desk to the right. Where are we going? There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. <laughs> Play a song, grab the sliders, and move them up and down. Go nuts! I don't know what that does. Oh, is that for the soundboard? Sliders should be right in front of you. Like, directly in front. Alright. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local that seems like this should be a VR game. I not encourage you. <clears throat> I, I wish. You had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, you're live in three, two... One eighty nine point sixteen. I'm scared, dude. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to one eighty nine point sixteen, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Put this away. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to play you a scream. How do I put this, this away? Call and guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is... <laughs> what? Idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Well, We're going sorry, to Peggy. Scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so. I hate what I've become. <laughs> I won't do it. Are you serious? Really, Peggy? You want you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, 
and then call in to guess that screen. Oh, here goes nothing. The Peter, the perturbed Yeti screen, the falling from the cliff screen, the drowning screen. It's been falling from the. Let's hear the best Yeti calling. Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried. Fair that you really just <laughs> Just call in at 555 239 KFAM with your guess. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Oh, this didn't say which one I had to put on. Time responses. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song 1980X. Oh God, Forrest, that was amazing. Thanks. I can't wait Thank to hear you. what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Light enough, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. What do I do now? Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. Caller, you're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on? <laughs> Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Are you calling to guess that scream? <laughs> Shouldn't you be working? It's a slow night. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, Leslie, I guess it must be a slow night for crime if you've got time to call in. What can we do for you? Slow night? Forrest, I found a body. I need help. Forrest, I recognize your voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, <laughs> Just... I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. <clears throat> Are you serious? You should call the sheriff. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? Yeah, I'm I sure. couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casing. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Is there anyone else at the same? Where are the other officers? I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or whatever cops are supposed to do? No, I checked everywhere. Deputy <clears throat> Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I mm, called you right after I found her. God. Yeah, that's not too bad. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three, but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. <coughs> Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Why me? Oh, this is a bad idea. You can count on me. 
You can count on me. Uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you, Forrest. You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews. They sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I Oh, they just teleport away. away. Okay. And besides, there are two of them. <sighs> All right. Talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. <laughs> well, let's have some on the job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's got to be another way in. No. Maybe another set of There's keys. There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? The sheriff, wouldn't it? Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him. I mean, he's the higher up, right? You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. <clears throat> oh, I think I might be sick. Damn, someone really doesn't like the police, I guess. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Nah, I mean... <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about the police. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. I mean, everyone. I mean, I've met a lot of good cops, but I've seen a lot of bad cops. You know? It's a weird gray area. So far, so good. <laughs> how are you feeling, Forrest? I can't handle this all night. I think we can handle this. I'm quitting KFM if this is a prank. <laughs> I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. <laughs> I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. It's the right thing to do. <clears throat> Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. That's fine. You know, I feel like oh, Leslie. My car is on fire. What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Why does that name just Did seem just like they use that for a lot of like Wait. cops' names? I feel like. Wait. What? No, no way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? What's I that think. noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? I'm not the thing with them personally. I can't really trust them. They feel like a danger to me. Whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's. What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think. Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. We need to think. Take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like you should take one of those. I Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any uh, just reach into your pocket there. 
Barrett deputy and yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. Mm. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait, how am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Take that part. He knows his gun. Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. Oh, right. fuck. Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Is there a weapon lockout? There must be a weapon lockout. There we go. Right? Yeah, I have like a weird relationship with him. I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. 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 Uh, shit! None of the keys work. Or are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um. Uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Don't you guys carry batons? Or I guess, uh... <clears throat> yeah, they're called batons right here. Alright. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? Uh... uh I mean, the pepper spray can blind the person. <clears throat> But they're still going to be swinging around madly and they can still grab onto somebody and hold them just because they're blind. So, a baton, I mean, I think they said if they shot the motherfucker earlier or whatever the fuck and it wasn't working, I don't think a baton's going to work. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a taser would be your best bet because a taser is long distance and it's reusable. Uh, I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Got it. Just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then. Wait. Probably fucked up. Uh, no. No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Careful. Careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay. <clears throat> Sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So here we go. Again. Thank you for the lark without Rocky. So I should be able to hear you when I reach the car. If I reach it. I hope. Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. I have to put some enthusiasm on it. woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. You know, I've gotta say. This really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. We're still on there. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Do I have to Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? You make it to the oh, car. Oh. I hope so. 10-4. That's a big 10-4 there, good buddy. I I'm guessing you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Debbie Martinez is in the passenger seat. Nice. I don't see the whistling man anymore. Oh, he's and probably in the fucking him. car, isn't he? So I'm going that to fucking us. stereotype. He's probably in the back. God damn it, get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, dude. You saved a life. Just another day for you. 
here's the thing about a taser, man. That's going to make your muscles lock up. Especially if it actually gets inside the skin. How long do you think it's going to take to get home? Gallows Creek and the nowhere. <laughs> and then like I shit I'm a VIP brother I made you a VIP because you were always in my streams and stuff <laughs> don't you remember it happened like I think a week or two ago I was like hey man I'm going to make you a VIP because you're always lurking in my streams you may not have been here you might have just been lurking maybe you didn't hear it <laughs> better floor it you keep that pedal to the floor then We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. I mean, you're a cop. Floor that shit. Yeah, anyway, no. There's a murderer about. Don't even think about that. Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest Peggy, I've got to go. Oh, okay. Might have been drunk. I, I think that might have happened, too. Because didn't you say something about celebrating a party at some point, I think? Take care. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Can I just do it? Deputy, hey, Deputy Martinez survived the whistling man. <laughs> I got the achievement. Please make sure to stay safe. Hey, that was awesome. I don't know. See, like, there's time questions where they have that timer, and I guess if you don't answer it in time, then you're completely fucked. There's times where it's not a timer, and I still feel like I'm being rushed. I'm like, uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> my bad, guys. I'm just pausing so I can hit my ball, because just in case if there's like another like quick time thing, I want to make sure I don't fuck it up. We save two people. Oh yeah, I forgot the one deputy was just unconscious. You're absolutely right. Save two people. <laughs> Well, yeah, it is. <coughs> I'm getting like, I have to sit there and think about this stuff, and I kind of want to just like apply my knowledge to these questions. <coughs> and I'm glad that my, you know, what I was thinking worked, because I know you know those games where you like you're trying to you know like, you try to put real world knowledge to it, and then it ends up backfiring in your face. And you look silly. I'm like, I really hope this isn't like one of those, and I look like a silly. <coughs> Because I knew the gun wasn't going to fucking do anything. Oh, my bad. I knew the fucking baton wasn't going to do anything. Because, I mean, if they shot at the motherfucker and he was still chasing me, what the fuck is a baton going to do? And then, pepper spray's not going to work. I mean, you can blind the person, but they're still, they can still swing, grab you, and choke you and shit. <laughs> they don't have to just be like, ah, oh, fuck. Also, he's wearing a mask. So... Who's to say he doesn't have eye things protecting his, you know, his eyes, and it probably won't affect him that badly. So if you had pepper spray, you have to be kind of, like, pretty accurate with the shit. <laughs> Trying to go through my Steam wishlist to see what doesn't sell a lot, what doesn't, and get the stuff that doesn't go on so often now. Fuck yeah, brother. I need to check out that Steam uh, sale myself. We're going to unpause this. I just want to hit my bong real quick before, like, you know, <laughs> do any crazy shit again. <coughs> you know what's funny though is I called out that cliche that he was going to be in that car. And Leslie, we're counting on you. That's a fucking Halloween we're thing, dude. Back to the show, meanwhile. <laughs> if you have anything on mind, have any information about this whistling man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here. Uh, that's probably just one of the most overused cliches. The killer being in the back of the seat or the back of the car. <laughs> I'm not shitting on that, by the way. I just like, you know. Um, we're going to put on a different one. What about this one? It's David Scopo with Moonlight. I want to introduce every song. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. 
Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? <laughs> this guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who oh! is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall... God damn it. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and... Killed about a dozen... Okay, that's fucked up. Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just... Okay, what happened to him? He's come back, right? Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call Ooh. it whistling. <clears throat> and it was, well... This game is a little stressful. Maybe that's night. more of it. Anxiety. The police cornered him. Jumped into the river. Yeah. His body was never <sighs> So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? The story is he's biding his time. Waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other Tell me. We have a whistling killer on our hands tonight. I don't know. Uh, we're so screwed. I guess we'll find out. Well, it's better to be optimistic than that. All right, copycat or ghost killer. I, I guess we'll do our best. That's the spirit. <sighs> At least we got the word out. I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. <laughs> we only have 35. <laughs> Are you serious? We only have 35 <laughs> listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? A big guess could pump that up to ten. Uh. Five thousand on the low end? We can only dream of that. Five million. Million? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell happened to my guy? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Wait Take it when you're ready. Time to turn the music off. Well, I know. I think it's gonna be easy now, not? Uh, probably with that soundboard all the way up. Don't worry. Hello, caller. You're live. <laughs> 89.16. The scream. Is everything uh, all right? <laughs> okay. Uh, who is this? Are you? Uh, hello. Hello. Fine. <laughs> Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? Unconcealed. Unconvincing with me. You know my name. We whistle. <laughs> I've come back from the dead. Hey, 35 isn't so bad at having a thousand. No nah, it's not at all. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. You accept requests. Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Oh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice to us? I, I mean, me. We want cheese dusted pretzel. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. I'll cut your face off. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Yeah, cut them off. Yeah, cut him off. Uh, you gotta save the phone lines for the people who need help, you know? For anyone just tuning in. 
We do, in fact, have an actual killer out in the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Now it's time to go with the flow, and this is their hit <laughs> for health. They're not tie up the phone lines before that. Be a killer who right now is stalking. sacrifice. It's a thing. A thing. Oh, well, yeah. I, I could. I mean, I normally would have like indulged into it, but I'm like, well, fuck. It's funny. That could get people killed because there's an actual killer. And then all the people who are listening might think that the killer's not real, and that would like fuck up a lot of stuff. So. <laughs> Stay positive. Oh boy. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Uh? Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I dialed 911. I need the shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not being heard by what a call. I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name? What's your trouble? My name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. Uh, the cops aren't coming. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? What? Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and know some psycho dressed like the Whistling Man is after me, knife in hand. Oh God, it's actually mm. happening. Jasmine? I have to go out for a run. Well, Jasmine, I'm assuming that's like the reference to like marijuana or some shit. Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But I dropped my key somewhere along Maybe. the way. Maybe. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. So, Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I'm I... guessing. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Oh. I don't know anything about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Wait, wait, wait. I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. What the hell? You're listening to 189.16. I don't know. Scream. <laughs> Hosted by me, Forrest Nash. Your friendly neighborhood radio host. Mechanic and savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something. Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They're like the same, though. <laughs> no, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Uh, uh. Uh. Where she was in town. What is this? I don't know. I do. Up to this top. Eleven, eight, oh, eight, maybe seven. I don't even know if this is like. <clears throat> this has to be important. I'm buying a car theft magazine and it's going to be Car 
that's that magazine. What the fuck is that? So yeah, it's in the bathroom. Fuck me. <clears throat> Maybe it's running, but we'll jazz me. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. It's just because, like, I've heard of, like... I think that was, like, the funniest thing I've ever heard, like... Marijuana I've called before. It was, like, called... <laughs> I used to call joints, like, jazz cigarettes. <clears throat> This was the bathroom, I'm not sure. Oh, the bathroom's here. I'll have to like, buy it. Yeah. Well, who the hell part of it? Step one, what? Use a screwdriver, if that fails, step two, remove steering column cover. Step three, check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. If there is a <laughs> if there is four before a three, and no seven in the number, red and blue. What? <laughs> I'm supposed to remember this? <laughs> I hope my character remembers some of this. Okay, so the easy one is like step one, use a screwdriver. If that fails, step two, remove the steering column cover. Step three, check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires again. If there's a four before a three and no seven in the number, red and blue. If there's a six anywhere and it doesn't start with five, green and brown. If there's a zero at the end and three doesn't come before six, before a six, red and yellow. Now, strip the purple wire. Do not touch this live wire. Brush the purple wire against the twisted wire from step three. If the radio turns on, it won't turn off. Cut the left pink wire. Do not cut the other pink wires. This will trigger the alarm. Strip <laughs> the left pink wire, but don't cut the other pink wires. <laughs> if there is alarm is sounding, cut the triple braided green <laughs> If the alarm is sounding, cut the triple braided green wire. And not the double braided green wire, or the quadruple braided wire, and doing so will mess with the electronic. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, brother! Yeah, right. That's why we. That's why we take pictures. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, hell no. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rocky. Welcome, everyone, just tune in. Oh, 
iron now. Oh wait, I could. I just realized I could just like set it right here in front of me, right? Okay, you know, I just probably didn't even have to do that. Okay, now what do I do now? At least they let you keep it right there. Did you find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? <laughs> the creep's looking through the parking lot, trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this baby? Uh. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Screwdriver's uh. too fat to fit. What next? Hit the steering wheel with the hammer. Unscrew the steering wheel. Unscrew the steering column. Alright. Jazz turn. Jazz turn. Oh, maybe she was jazzing it up. Dude. Maybe she was jazzercising. This is the 80s, right? What's the serial number on the steering wheel? What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576 894 Uh. Strip and twist the red wires together. Does it say there's a zero at the end and a. Yeah, this has to be it. Strip and twist together the red <laughs> wires. Alright. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Strip the purple on the crystal. Strip the purple on the bush and gets to twist it. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and. Fantastic work, baby! Anytime you want to come down to the jazz studio, you get in for free! Just keep driving. <clears throat> you just keep driving now, okay? We can get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. Hey. We did it, Forrest! Sure did. Here comes another <laughs> hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. Huh? Listen into this next track. Hey, late night free jazz. jazz. Oh, yeah. I still can't believe this is happening. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? Hey. What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. <laughs> <laughs> miserable? It's not me personal, it's a sad place in there. Tag me. Be honest. It's, uh, it's a sad place on there. <laughs> what about Peggy Beyond? Peggy, be honest. It's a dump. 
There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and... Uh, friendly. Oh, man. If you get to know them. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. I guess some folks have been okay. Shit. You're not terrible. After a while. Not terrible after a while? My brain is coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. <clears throat> anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. And that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Damn. Caller on line one. Hey. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Boris. My name is Brian. And it's Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. <laughs> Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And <laughs> if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals. We'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. Why can't I turn We've this off? We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it, you're just calling in to advertise your shop. For for Peggy, hang up on him. Why didn't we hang up on him sooner? Done. Oh. <laughs> Before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Sure. Is this the ad? Harvest Festival? Ooh, fuck. Done. Is this the ad? <laughs> Oh shit. And make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthew. I can't fuck with it through <laughs> the peace. If he's a man, let's go. Right he's exactly. trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr.
My name is Teddy Gallows Jr., and I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Melinda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Ugh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he <laughs> played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Yeah, so far we've been doing pretty good. That reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Welcome to the Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Three people yeah, tonight? Oh, yeah, Russell, two? Three? Yeah, you're right, three. My bad. I keep forgetting about the two people. guy just broke in downstairs. Wait. Forrest Nash? speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Uh, Leslie left me in charge. Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie? Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Ted? Oh, what my. happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you with an anonymous source as a concern. What? We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on? Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah, worse every year. <clears throat> and this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. Damn. But I was <clears throat> there. I covered it. Uh, I don't think it's a team. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. Oh, shit, they guys. Think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. I am really Edward enjoying Marshall this, though. Is dead. I feel like this should be a VR game. Is this a VR game? I feel like it could be one. I feel like if I play this in VR, though, it'd probably make me like, oh shit. We got security <laughs> cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set. There's a set in the board. Because it control, like it plays kind of like a, a VR game a little bit. Can you get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. Blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Goodbye, Marie's time. Goodbye, Marie's time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. <laughs> I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... Realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. 
The facts. I'm here. If it isn't in the VR, it should have a drama about it later. later. Go check your facts machine. Don't let me down. More to do. That was fast. How do you know our fax machine number? KFAM and the Gallows Reporter have a pretty long history. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Oh, good thing I came back. I would have missed that. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. This must be it. Okay. Uh. Okay, because he just sent the fax machine, so that means he's on the boardroom side, and the killer's blocking the stairs. What? I feel like he can just go to like I don't know where the hell he's at exactly. So we'll just say extension like four. It's in that way, because he might be in the editor's exit I don't know if the editor's going to but I don't fucking know. Uh, shit, dude. But he just sent the facts, so that means he has to be in the back room, right? The fourth one? So I think extinction number three would probably be the best one, because then he would have to go through uh, here. Oh wait, I want him to get out of here for that. But there's a secret archive in there. If I'm looking at this right, because there's a door that leads like that, right there. The archive room's a lot bigger. <clears throat> But if he goes into the editor, it's like exit or whatever. He's probably going to like the secret archives, and there's like another room for him to like look around in, I guess, or what the fuck. Because uh, I think the one dude's in the boardroom, if he just sent that fax, he would have to run all the way over here, open that door, and then make it dip for it down the fucking hall, <clears throat> and then go down the steps, which should be enough time. So I was thinking about the archives, but like the killer like literally just goes in there and turns around. Really ain't too much. It seemed like it would buy him some time. 
But then, like the editor of the room, like I said, you have to enter the one room with the phone. It's going to look around in that room. Then there's another room with the secret archives. So you'll probably go in and look around in. And then uh, that would buy them enough time to get the hell down the steps, I think. <sighs> That's what I'm going to go with. Extension number three. I hope. I could be wrong. Hey, did you get the fax? Yes, I have. I lost it. Mr. Russell, are you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the board. But now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we he's want in to the draw office the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? The editor's off. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Mm. The kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. Oh, I hope I didn't fuck this up. I can't believe it! He's actually heading to my office! It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Uh, don't mention it. Ooh. Coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Oh, I hope he makes it. Do you think it. he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is going to buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. we got to think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Calling coming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Oof. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. i got to give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Hmm. Right, let's review where we are. Fuck, so, over. the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. Not quickly, or quietly. Can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. The damn fire regulation. Say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as. Wait, wait, wait! No, 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 no! I got it. The secret archive through my office, where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer <clears throat> space. How's that? This? <laughs> Peggy, I don't think now's the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. Oh, well, yeah, let's it hear figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room, only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in, we can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Wow. Oh, my God. Forest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Yeah. 
Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? A sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns on when he's here. I hope he's a 189.16 this screen This is totally off. Might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work. I should maybe said the TV, but. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. We're gonna save him, Forrest. I hope. If this works, we might even save the whole town. I don't even know. Let's make it happen. Close. Let's make it happen, Peggy. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with steps. Get the radio, plant it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and oh, call incoming from there be a TV in the secret archives. Putting it through now. Nash, hello. Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. Hell yeah, it's brother. All coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. Oh, brother, that was quick. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off. He's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Maurice. Because uh, he's in the archives right now, right? So that means we would have to... Point sixteen, the scream, Gallows Creek's best and only phone-in talk show, with me, Forrest Nash, and me, Peggy. This seems Jesus like fuck. Christ. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? I think in the boardroom, not the kitchen. But then again, he needs time to run. Wait a minute. Uh, I guess I don't. Isn't he in the archives now? Because he just got the radio, correct? And the killer, I think, is searching his office already, which is the editor's exit. What the fuck? Huh? 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 Yeah, definitely not the kitchen. And that definitely wouldn't be the archives since he's just gonna so it'd have to be like the board game, I would say. Uh, yeah, the board room. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I mean well, cause like Let me have a think again. Because he has his pussy. <clears throat> I mean... If he's already in the editor's office. If I call the kitchen and he's in the archives or in the kitchen floor, is he going to run past the killer anyways? Maybe the archives and then like... Cause am I sending him to hide in a place again, and then he's gonna make a dip to like the...
Fuck, I don't really know. But he's already searched the kitchen, so I don't think he's going to search the kitchen again. Call the archives. The extension is zero one. I'm in the archives. Keep your head on, man, or he's going to cut off mine. Okay. Yeah, I was right. So it would have to be the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer. The killer. Either. The killer's in the editor's sure? office. I'm sure to make the call. I'm sure. Make the call. He's okay. a, the killer's in the editor's the office. The dude who's actual editor, he's in the archive. I think it's been silly to call like the kitchen because like he's literally right across from. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. And so the thing about the boardroom, the boardroom is like right across from the editor's office. So that means the killer has to make you know the trip to the editor's office or the boardroom. My bad. Check the noise, which is actually a pretty fair big ass room, so you'll probably be checking for a while. I couldn't call the archives because the dude's in the archives. Shouldn't call the kitchen because like he's literally right across from the kitchen. He would like run into the killer, so that's the only thing I could have called, I think. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'll turn. Uh I'll do fake advice. I'll personally just work on. I'll pretend to tell Maurice to hide in a secret archive. The killer will hear me. Go check it out. And we've got it. Oh, I like that. Make the killer think he has the upper hand, and then BAM! Okay, this is just a little confident. It is confusing. Oh, here I we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal. And I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am the good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. Mm. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far now. <sighs> Well, hiding underneath the desk is absolutely fucking silly. That definitely wouldn't work. Hiding in the archives when you plan on locking someone in, it's not going to work because you won't be able to lock the fucking lock. Um, the killer is at the boardroom, and the cubicles is a super distance away. Uh, so by the time that may, I would I would imagine by the time he gets like to halfway point, it's probably when the killer's going to pop out of the boardroom and dude's dead. If I get to choose where he can hide at, I'd probably say the women's restroom. That's the only thing I can think of. That's like the closest thing that's uh, that, uh, that's literally like boom, boom. If I can be able to make that choice, unless like it's only going to make me pick the options. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The bathroom, either the female or male restroom. Uh, I I'd probably pick the female restroom. I mean, well, I don't know. Honestly, I don't think the gender of the restroom would matter. But I mean, if I was a killer, I don't know. And you're like looking for a guy, and you know you're looking for a guy. I don't, I don't think it would matter, though. You know, if it's just like you're trying to kill someone. <laughs> but you know, maybe people are like, you know, they wouldn't put two into the game. I... <laughs> I th or maybe that's what he would think. And so maybe as a guy, you should hide in the guy's restroom. I don't really, uh, but the guy's restroom's further away. He would have to go around the corner. The female restroom is literally like boom boom. That would be funny. <laughs> I don't know, dude. This is a this is a tough one. Hide under your 
desk, hide in the cabinet, hide inside the secret archive, hide among the cubicles. The cubicles is really far away though. <coughs> the secret archive. So it is only the options he gave me. He's literally in the boardroom though. This is absolutely wonky. I don't think the desk thing will work. And he said the cabinet thing will take some time. And the cubicles, I mean, I don't know. So it's really just between like the cabinet and the fucking cubicles, honestly. It's like which one would take more time. I feel like seeing how far away the cubicles are from this office, that would probably take more time. But the thing about the cubicles is he doesn't have to like really, you know, try to fit in or try to do anything. Like once you're there, you can kind of hide. But with the cabinet while you're trying to hide, that's the whole point. Like you're trying to get inside of it, you're trying to fucking fit inside, and you're making this noise. And then like the desk thing, like I said, just seems super silly. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't know. So it's between the cabinet and the cubicle. He already searched the editor's office, right? <clears throat> yeah, he was pretty much already in there. That was the first place I called him. <clears throat> so he was already in the editor's office. But that is a good point too. I mean, I guess he did search the editor's office already. So I mean... <clears throat> See if we can search the editor's office. That's a good point. Well, no. I don't think he would search the cabinet like at all. But the problem with the cabinet is it's going to take him a while to get inside of it. But he was already inside the editor's office. But you're absolutely right. So maybe if he did hit underneath the desk, that could possibly work. But that one still just seems so insane. Maybe it's the cabinet. Maybe it has to be the cabinet. But I think like the cabinet would make noise. So I mean, that being said, like if he's already been inside the editor's office, he's already searched it. Maybe hiding underneath the desk wouldn't be so silly. I like I don't even like the thing is is like I don't know if it's like a desk that you can perfectly hide under. I don't know if like they can see certain things. I could just like, it could be like a fucking school desk and you can just see perfectly underneath it. <laughs> I mean, imagine it's an office desk. So I feel like you could definitely hide. Okay, but I'm like, I'm looking at where that phone's at and I'm guessing, like, because he has to get inside that secret art. And that's another thing, too, by the way, is like the whole plan is also like. When he blasts that radio, that means he's going to have to make a choice and dip, and will he have enough time to dip into that cabinet? Like, how much time is it going to take him to get inside that cabinet? It's a lot easier if you hit underneath the desk, especially if you did search the office again. I don't think he's going to make it to the cubicles, because, like, if he blares that loud shit, that killer is probably going to be definitely chasing, or just speed walking, or something like that. The cubicle is just is not out of it. It's just not an option. Either like the boardroom is like right by the other thing. So I, th I think it's like it's either fucking the desk. Or he can hide in the secret archives. But then like I said, how the fuck is he going to like, you know, lock him in there? <clears throat> I don't think that's going to work. I'm just going to say hide underneath the desk. That's going to have to be it, dude. Fuck. Hide under the desk. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast. You're absolutely right. Don't say anything. <laughs> I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Hey, 
wrestling man. Jackass. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Forrest, he's, he's <laughs> oh, no. gone. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best. <sighs> that was. We'll be back soon. That was completely my fault, dude. Stories about Maurice that you'd like to share. Give us a call after this next track. Well, this is gonna be a long night. That was... Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, oh man. So scary. Besides, we've been working together. I panic because I've seen the timer You're thing. Still all shrouded in mystery. All right, shoot. What do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. Wow, well, shit. That was the time for us. How are you? So like <laughs> yeah, that's what up. That was fucked up. That was good. Why did you do it? Don't be sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. No, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Oh! Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, no, no. What happened there? Oh. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. Well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. Oh, man. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my hey. stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Oh. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't call. Any siblings? Don't Funny you mention that now. No. Oh, not anymore. No. I have oh. a sister, but I haven't seen her. Made ten shots, baby. <sighs> Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. <sighs> Understood. I'm on it now. The buzzer's on the front <laughs> door. I feel so bad about that guy die. <laughs> okay. Down to the first floor. Especially since I put in so much effort thinking about how the hell this guy. <laughs> Locked tight. Uh -huh. This is not an idea. Oh boy.
many locked doors, so few keys. Oh shit. <clears throat> Look, these fucking. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to help someone through this fucking maze. What? This down. I don't wanna lose it. I don't think it's it. Hey. Oh God, what the fuck was that? Scared the shit out of me. A tape play on air. It's <laughs> three out of <laughs> the last one, I'm sure. Oh, what's up here? <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to go through curfew. I don't know why I'm doing that. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. Oh, I did not enjoy that. <laughs> The tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how the killer could get from the newspaper to KFAM so quick, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. <laughs> I guess. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches bad. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, <laughs> Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dog, <coughs> Corn Dog, 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 Cor
It's funky, it's groovy, it's stabbing the twilight by knife and easy. <laughs> I pushed it under my them. door. Go play it. You stopped the show for a tape? Just go get it. What the fuck? Play me ASAP. Off the air. Alright, I've got it. Did we forget an ad or something? I don't know. It was buried in my work now. I only just saw it. See what it says. Uh, play me ASAP. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. And he wrote it in purple. And? Purple is Reggie's angry color. <laughs> what the hell? He writes in purple when he's really pissed off. Wait, what? He has an angry color? He has an angry color. Oh, Forrest. I'll give you the Reggie rundown later. Right now, we need to play that tape. Uh, well, fuck for you. How do I go off there? Whoever just came to tune in. Or actually, I don't know who's all working or watching right now. I hope you guys have been enjoying the stream. Um, I accidentally got someone killed. to be a big deal. Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. <gasps> I love Roddy. <laughs> you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fan, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Roddy Snatcher sounds awful like a body snatcher. Roddy Snatcher sounds like a wrestler, honestly. It's Roddy Snatcher. Station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Body Snatcher and a wrestler, dude. No, brother. Yeah, where am I going? I can't go back to this fax machine and I'll be reminded of the guy I let down. <laughs> that I was just... <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Must be it. Final breath. 
my tiny selection grows. This guy I'm playing as kind of sounds like Mr. Creepypasta. <clears throat> Going up the stairs. Just like five dead flies, just right there. <laughs> what was this for some reason? <laughs> Why is there just five dead flies on the desk? <laughs> Fuck me. That way, it's probably. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. There we go, baby. And <coughs> We should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. You know, I love how we just like we can just talk so casually Every when we just got someone killed. Peggy, <laughs> the whole song. Oh, whoops! It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh shoot! I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. <laughs> the fact she brings back memories kind of goes when you walk past it. Oh yeah, dude. When you're ready, shut the music off. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911. <laughs> I just keep tapping the mic. Murphy. <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's three today, and man. Being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh, and most importantly, how to love. Oh, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I oh. want the word out to this so called. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea, Murphy. <laughs> I got all the tapes in Master Robbins' Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> Master Robbie. Oh no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. Anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Uh -oh. hmm, is this it? <sighs> the world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Corn Hole, Corn on the Cob, Crokin' Hole, Country Music, like Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, He's got a little dog and I'm have to watch out for Murphy. <laughs> we got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies. Apple bobbin, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seed, spitting, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. 
And bait tattoo face paint and puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dance and story swap and spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here, Forrest. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome <laughs> back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab... Your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. Yeah, you this guy sounds doing. just like Mr. Creepy Gossip. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure. Hello? Who is this? <sighs> Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me. That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me. Jesus. Listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them or... Sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep Was it wrong whistle Virginia. or a weak whistle? Be Please okay. be specific. Please don't let me die. <laughs> I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm. I'm. Oh, God. Can you run away? Can you run out back? No. What if he's outside, waiting for me? Oh, God! Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Blonde bearded beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I can't. I can't. Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. I can't do this. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Mm. Was it pizza? Oh my god. Uh, I don't know if I put a record on. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Monty's Pizza. That's it, I think. That's it? That's it? Gallows Creek only has three places? You know, Forrest, just for once, I think you should be thankful that we're not in Chicago. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, 
call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. Got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I didn't even know I was supposed to be looking for takeout things. I wonder how. Where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... I just have to look around. Well, I mean, I would imagine the pizza place. Oh no, the map is there. It's just too many flashbacks. Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. I can't run. <laughs> Everywhere I look, dude. Let's put that there for now. We'll see scroll when we get back up here. I'm not getting in there tonight. It's this way. Jesus Christ. One free beer and we're through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallo's high performed. Well, actually. This has like the one, the beer thing with it, I think. Well, I'm just trying to open this shit. Mousetraps are really a rat trap. Seven day. Mm -hmm. I have an order. It's pockets pizza, the only thing that has a bumper. It's not opening. 
Now that's a problem. I'm gonna need it to open. Oh, yeah, I got one. One number. Pizza guy from really might have been foreshadowing, unless they're really trying to test your brain. Well, I mean, I'm trying to find the other numbers because I thought there might have been more. Because I mean, this pizza has this thing has like the beer deal, and if you're a frat, that means you're a legal age to drink, which means hey, why not get the beer? Because you know the pizza plus the beer, or whatever. But. Anything useful? Uh, well, shit. Remind me what I'm looking for again. The frat house by Virginia has been ordering takeout all night. We've got to figure out who they've been ordering from, then place an order for the frat house with a note to call the station. Okay, but how do I figure out who they call? We need to think like frat boys, Forrest. What would you order if you were a frat boy? Mm, cheap food and cheap beer. Exactly. Use your frat boy instincts to guide you. Check Brad's desk in the office. He's our food critic, so his desk is your best bet for food-related info. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. See what you find. He's the food critic. Oh, I mean, I got the pizza box. You can all agree that flavor profiles that you prefer are the best in times, despite being a pricey option off the offer no deal itself. Well, this one's super fucking pricey, but here. Hey. A promotion, huh? Please enjoy your free sample of Galaga. We've been our latest offers and deals on the outside of the box and we've been out on the air. Well, this brings me off this terrible, and you think you should really are uh, very upset. P.S. I kind of started liking him as a trailer for three hours, so the rest of the pizza. Much love, pumps and milk. Yeah, I ate the dollar as much like his show. It was, a uh... Damn, I was going to be up here. The deal was worth checking out, though. about so someone like two of them. Well, I mean, it definitely has to be the pizza place if, like, if it's the cheapest option. see if I can see where this fucking place is. I see Pots' Pizza right there. And there's Chupa Cabra's.
I don't see where this fucking uh I just don't see that. I don't see uh Uh, you can put shit on the board and stuff with that. That's missing. Oh. What the hell is this for three minutes? Is that galleries and something? Like Hey, find anything useful? Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Haunty's Pizza. You got it. Oh, fuck, I have a lot of this. Conti's Pizza is on the line. Conti's Pizza, may I take your order? Fat man calling. Hey, dude, what's going on? Uh, may I take your order? I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread! Can do? So where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of what is being said, you know. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. Okay, well, fuck. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. I want to put on this. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Did it, dude. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? <laughs> oh, I mean, they're all equal. No. Equally good? You mean equally good? Yeah, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right, so between grilling spree and chalupa coppers. I mean, chalupa coppers? Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe I... Hold that thought for us. We've got a call coming in. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hey, hey, hey. This is Fratman Bunker. We got some... And I don't have to call this number. <laughs> yes! Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it? Goose. <laughs> oh, this is such a Goose friend. Uh, this is an emergency. Plunker, this is an emergency. I nice try, Goose. I may be drunk, but I'm no fool. Listen, I need you to Goose, come get beer. Your brother is awaiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. How can I prove this to you? Oh, let me. 
Sixteen, the stream. Forest, it's the king. <laughs> He's at the door. Face. Oh my God, it's it's you, isn't it? Clive, I didn't talk. I promise. Oh, the party has arrived. Oh, thank God. Thanks God. And oh, oh, is that you, Radio Man? Don't worry, we brought the beer. <laughs> Hell yeah. I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. <laughs> some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. Hey. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that Does that count as me saving the person? Didn't talk. You know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but ah, your guess is as good as mine. That's some typical Scooby Doo shit, dude. Seems we may have a oh yeah, I did. I saved him. If you know a suspicious Clive, hey. then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. The killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Terrible. I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. <laughs> safe, family friendly. Oh, what small post do you own? <laughs> you sure up late. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. Here in my business. <laughs> What is your business anyway? You must really, really love your work. You must really, really love your work. Oh, I do. My small business really is my whole world. What's your small business? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you asked, it's parties. <laughs> 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 what the hell? God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! What the fuck? I mean I was expecting an actual like a different person. Ponty's dick say Virginia. I can be mad. Virginia I can be mad. What the fuck? He's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. That's like a bit from Family Guy or something. <laughs> what the fuck? Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 <laughs> stand-in. Hi! Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? <laughs> what have you got for us tonight? <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the main... Here, wait a minute. Ugh, why does my fucking, uh... 
don't know why my mouse has been all slow. <clears throat> oh shit. I'm just checking something out real quick. I'm probably have to repack my bond too. That's some shit. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, shit. Well, fuck. lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. Oh. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Go home to your parents. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. Good talking. Oh, fuck. Uh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no! This is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst! Can't you just run through the walls? It's only corn. It wouldn't be the maze maze if you could just walk through walls, Forrest. She's right! I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. <laughs> what the hell? Call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. You're gonna love this next track. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last night, but she changed her mind. Oh, shit. Why is she changed her mind? Is it maze maze for kids? Barbara then? 
if she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can oh, find. Oh yeah, the maze. Be enough. Uh, I'll probably wrap this up at the three hour mark so I can get some sleep for work. Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress. Of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Um... Just have to get that fucking maze maze. Oh, I think you went down. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. It's corn time, baby. Mm, there's the exit. Oh, he has to go to the line. All the way up to three. Go up to three. I'll make five for next to everything. See if we get a one, three, and one, three, seven, eight. That's how it's gonna work, maybe. It is going time, dude. I'm trying to look at this fucking uh, because he's in the middle where that tree is at. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to have him go to number one first. I'm gonna make his way up to three. To six. Ten. I am guessing that. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Oh what? shit. The trash? Never mind. It doesn't matter right now. Oh, I gotta stand up for a second. Eugene called while you were away. <laughs> He's on line one. Why does he throw it in the trash, dude? Mm -mm -mm. Guys, I'm just uh, standing up for a second. Oh boy, how's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully, well. I appreciate all the people who are uh, lurking and being here. You guys are sweet little babies. Oh, there we go. I felt good. I need to buy me a better chair, dude. I need to fucking like look up good chairs and do my research. I just need a good solid chair. Like a good sturdy one. Time to turn the music off. Welcome back to 189.16 the stream. I hope you lovers so Those gamer chairs don't really work, man. Those gamer chairs like just are not good. Eugene, you're back on air. <laughs> I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran, and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad, facing a tractor statue. 
There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Facing the tractor statue, the hay bales are gold on the right. You want to go left. Yeah, if I'm looking at this right. Go backwards. Face in the tractor statue. Only able from the right. So yeah, you're going left. Just making sure. Go left. I think Barb threw it in the trash because Barb wanted to break up with her, so she didn't want to get the maze anymore. That's perfectly understandable. I think it's also understandable not to go want to go to a maze. Um, I don't know, man. I just never like I love you know like I can do mazes like you know the ones that you look at and you actually draw at, you draw on and shit like that. I could do puzzles and stuff like that, but like I don't see the. Like, there's places, too, that pay you money. Like, you have to pay money. Like, hey, here, you pay us money. Now, try to find your way out of the maze. And it's just like, well, now I just felt like I got robbed of money. It's like, <laughs> I don't... I, I just, like, I felt like I just got robbed. Or, like, those fucking, like... I don't know, those rooms where they lock you in. Those escape rooms. I'm like, that's the silliest thing I've ever... I'm paying you to lock me in the room, and I have to find my way out and solve puzzles. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, what is this? This is like the most whitest thing I've ever seen, bro. And I'm, I know I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm just saying what it is. It's like that is one of the most whitest things I've ever seen. That's like some super honky shit. <laughs> I remember when my friends made me go to this fucking sports bar. It's called fucking dicks because like the whole point of the sports bar is like they treat you like shit. They yell at you. They cuss at you. They draw like hats and they make you wear them that like pretty much roast you and make fun of you and they'll like fill your drinks up halfway and just fuck up your, not really fuck up your food all the way, but you know, like when you ask for your drinks and stuff, they'll like probably yell at you and make you go get them, which I'm a fan of, by the way. I, I hate having to wait for a waiter or ask someone, they're like, hey, can you fill up my drink? I love the, I love being able to just go and get my drink and refill it myself because that's what I much rather do. Um, but fuck, I hate that place. <laughs> I absolutely that is the worst place I've ever been to and that is one of the most stupidest whitest things I've ever been to it's just like uh, why am I going here it's cause they it's cause they treat you like shit they yell at you and I'm like bro I could just go to a normal sports bar and the food sucked ass anyways like, so I could have just went to a normal sports bar <laughs> like what is just helping I don't know. That was that was just so silly to me. It was not worth the trip. And I'm just like, you guys are just fucking, like, you guys are just, I don't know what to say about you guys, honestly. I mean, this is silly. This food sucks ass, and I paid, like, way more than I should have. That's the fucking grimiest, poopiest thing ever. You fucking piece of shit place. I remember it just so well because I remember the chick shitty joke because she tried to call me a pedo. Like her joke was like, "Oh," because <laughs> like all, like a lot of my friends were like were youngish, not like super fucking young, but like under, like they were like nineteen, twenty. You know, I was like a little bit like a year or two older. So she made like the joke like I was trying to like I guess like molest them or some shit. <laughs> and I was just like, "Yeah, <laughs> if I play my cards right and I wait." <laughs> I was just like, uh, but that was a good roast. I'm glad you, uh, that was like, like no, that wasn't like, you know, easiest thing ever. Oh, it was super fucked. But, you know, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to think how old I was actually, like, because this was way back. I think this was back when I actually worked at a sports bar myself. So I think I was like, 19 going on 20. My friend Jarrett was like 19 going on 20. He had a really good best friend that was like named Logan who was like 16 or 17. 
And then like we pretty much like had his Logan's two friends with him. And at the time, I remember making fun of my friend Jarrett, like, bro, like, why the fuck are we hanging out with, like, these 16 years old? And you're like, I'm not, like, I understand, like, you know, we weren't doing nothing, like, crazy or wacky like that. It was just, like, I was just, like, bro, this is just silly. I don't know, like, I don't just, I don't know. But he's just, like, oh, but, you know, it's, like, Logan, it's my best friend, Logan's friend. And I'm, like, oh, I guess, man. I guess, but I just, <laughs> uh, Jesus. <clears throat> I would always make fun of him for hanging out with his motherfuckers. I remember him one day, him getting upset with me because he's just like, come on, G.I., we're going to go to this thing. We're going to go to this party. We're going to, I'm like, hey, brother, I'm not going to a party with no, like, you know, these motherfuckers like 16, 7, like, you're fucking silly. No. <laughs> you have fun, homie. You do you. I'm not, I'm not, nah, I'm good. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I, I'm not hanging out with, like, brother. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I don't think I could work at a sports bar like dicks. I can't just go uh, be mean to people. Well, it's not even really... I just... It's a stupid fucking gimmick, my, in my opinion. I really just don't even... My, I swear to God, these motherfuckers were hyping it up like it was so awesome in this experience, and I'm going to be happy, and I wasn't happy because I paid so much for this shitty chicken that I could have just got from like from fucking B-dubs or something. but then again B-dubs is actually better than them I, like I would have much rather went to B-dubs or some shit like that warning incoming raid <laughs> brother you scared the fuck out of me you gotta calm down with that shit dude <laughs> trying to give me a heart attack. I'm sorry that I have this pause. I just wanted to talk a little bit and I just wanted to hit my bong real quick. Um, Welcome to the stream, Prater. How are you doing, homie? What were you playing? My bad, I was just talking about this shitty sports bar. <coughs> That's cool, bro. I mean, over late every night, it looks like a police axe on by the Fuck yeah. <coughs> go backwards he has a pig statue in front of him and a rocking horse to the left so he wants to go backwards go backwards <laughs> why did I just wind her over oh. I'm at a crossroads there's a pitchfork statue up ahead which way uh left go left Um, I want to say right. So there's a barn in front of them. Nothing to a side, so I want to say right. Go right. Oh, so, that means he's at the crossroads, right? 
go right. I mean, if he's passive, if he's just at the crossroads, so he should go right. Go right. My bad guy. I'm playing this new-ish horror game called uh, Killer Frequency. I'm out. I did it, baby. <laughs> Hey. That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're hey. right. Hey, let's go, dude. I saved another person. And thank you for shouting out. Do you think she's okay? I was running some calls in Modern Warfare 2. Eugene, Fuck yeah, hardcore free she all. Probably never left her. I haven't played Modern Warfare 2 in a hot ass minute. I need to, honestly. It's been too long. We saved another person. And... Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. The screen. Wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. You got it? I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but what uh, the hell? I don't have it anymore. What? what are you talking about? <clears throat> I threw it away. I didn't take as long as I thought it was. I thought it'd be more confusing. No, I. Me too. I threw it out the window earlier today. I mean, hecky. All right, fair enough. <laughs> And why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. Sorry about Brad. For shame, Peggy. For shame. <laughs> I'm sorry Brad was being a dick. I... Thanks, Forrest. Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Uh, I mean, uh... I don't know. Fine. Uh, I can't, it's just like... <laughs> Comes one of my favorites. Uh, is that it? Of all the songs to request, oh, okay, there we why go. did it have to be that? <coughs> Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Gee, Peggy. Not that song, for one. <laughs> it gets real old Peggy. when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189. <laughs> Scream. This What's is my favorite Forrest color, bud? My bad. I fucking zone out. Let's go. Two rounds out of uh, about 10 out of 12. I got most kills. Fuck yeah, dude. My favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is uh, purple. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. Uh oh. I, uh, why did I ever trust a guy, Master Robin? <laughs> I warned you not to. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay. Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn place. Ooh. I think he started a fire. 
Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. Uh, I need someone here now, or I'm gonna well, die. Well, fuck me. I can do that. Hey, get the fire department. Uh, what's your favorite Honey. color? All right. Now just come on. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. Uh. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? I can't throw it. Oh. He oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed oh. the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. What? I, what? Why'd we go that far? Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield oh. and Romero Street. Haddonfield? Lives on the west end of Just Myers like fucking from Halloween. There's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Alec lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romero Street. Uh, these are all just a bunch of references to a bunch of movie and horror shit. Romero from George Romero. Haddonfield from Halloween. Myers from fucking Michael Myers Halloween. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> Wait, probably black and brown. Let me see that console. What console? Huh? Myers Lane, Haddonfield, sick. Hell yeah, dude. Let's see. Come on, Haddonfield. Fuck is Romero shit. <clears throat> no worries. Uh, a corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romero Street. This is at the corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romero Street. <clears throat> so that would be literally right there by the disposable plant, right there, right? It's like, that's where Alex lives. It's at the west end of Myers Lane. So the west end, that'd be like right here. Uh, old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. Right there. Uh. Wanna wait for a fire department to get more fire engines? That's just like a sticky one, I guess, just to be a smart ass. I mean, it's definitely Alex. Alex is like literally right by the waste disposal thing. And I mean, why the hell would I call an old man? Man, that Catherine is too far away. So, hey, look at that. So, who is in there? Alex. <clears throat> uh. Yeah. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Alex. All right, give me a second. There you go. <clears throat> but if you're asking the color of my consoles, my PC tower is all black. It has like a rainbow little RGB kind of thing inside of the case. It's not really a... Sh They're on the way. Nothing so flashy. The plant. Uh, my PS5 the is the basic so white you that you get. Um... My switch is the Animal Crossing collectible switch. There you go. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Those are the colors of my consoles. Are you sure you can't? Here, I'm just taking a drink. What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away, too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. So Murphy is. Fernando is going to be crushed.
His father died a hero. He was just trying to protect the town. How not? Actually, pretty nice, Forrest. Did I just read that wrong? I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Peggy. Was it talking about this corner right here? Forrest, we have another caller. Let's well, well, I guess that's two people dead. <coughs> Maybe I'm just a dumb right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Maybe I just read, Maybe I just read that wrong. And I guess it would have been like old man Jericho. That was, that was the only closest one. I guess like it was, instead of like this corner, it was supposed to be the corner right there. And I guess that's a little bit further. So Jericho would have not well, what? Fuck me, dude. I'm like, <laughs> Maybe I just like I just looked at it wrong. I, Take the wrong corner, I guess. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Horace Nash. Horace, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this off time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding. Killer shot. To keep us safe. Why is it going that high? Hey, Teddy, we. I know you're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. Oh. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Come on, Jackass. the slam, and welcome to the jail. Or prick I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. I'm glad I called you a prick on That's air. That's why the Gallows family back <laughs> by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs I can't believe Murphy died because of this. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do. <laughs> a problem that's ruining our town. I don't know what it is. Your family's place plant bird. Emergency, not problem. I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, oh, no. our current mayor. Yeah, it was the mayoral candidate Linda that killed Murphy. Oh, here we go. She just How do we just cut him off? Why are we listening to this stuff? Linda Cartwright, American, <laughs> unstable, and... You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town. It... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee Should've just cut him this off kind of thing will not happen when <coughs> I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back uh, after these messages. Sam, I don't know if that's the ad. Uh, time to play a commercial. Yeah, I found like a new tape. How about here? Yeah, here we go. We found a new grilling one. It's just uh, it's just pop that bad boy up. Right there, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's not that bad boy. <laughs> Great park, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, oh. Thing. Oh, right, uh, I thought this was an ad. Oh, it is, man. It is. Okay, we're good. What am I gonna do? The party is going to be over. Yeah, that was some, yeah, that was American yeah, that I made made the something. Can I share a link? Ah, no. <laughs> I don't. You heard me. Six beer. Gallows High wins. 
you can like uh, like send it in a Discord message or something like that if you want. Me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to the square and call off five 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 seven four nine eight three three five. We go to the How's everyone doing, by the way? Shout out to the five homies who are here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest. Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh, I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Uh, just get me back on the air. And we're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. And Murphy's caller dead. Line one. <clears throat> Murphy's dead, and I'm fucking traumatized. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Oh, brother, that's too vast, too many on my conscience. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What's the control? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. I was able to DM you here on Twitch. <clears throat> he's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it! He's just a kid. Uh, where are you? Can you run? Is there a way out? Can you run? Oh my god, oh my god! You stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of the hall. There's, there's a bathroom, like an entrance closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? <sighs> bathroom, silly. I mean, it's a one-way entrance and exit. You're gonna trap yourself. Uh, what is it? Bedroom and closet. Well, you can go into a bedroom, I and mean, there's no guarantee that there will be anything to hide in that bedroom. So, and it's an old house, which means it's probably abandoned. There's probably no furniture around. So, I mean, the bedroom is just not a good option unless you know there's something actually hiding there. And then, like I said about the bathroom, the bathroom has like a one-way entrance exit. You're trapping yourself. You're gonna get yourself killed. So that's a no-go. So I'm probably gonna go closet with this one uh, because purple is your favorite color. I use that for your name. For my name. Yeah, I can uh, a peep real quick. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh shit. Uh -huh. Wait, you made my name purple or what now? What does that link to? your name. Wait, I dropped the graphic in my Discord server. What's your name as an overlay? My name as an overlay? <coughs> you got me confused there, homie. That's my name as an overlay.
Oh. I would click on that. I, I, I mean, I, I just fucking that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go to the closet. Go to the closet. Pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of I'm gonna find it. You're sick, Jimmy. He's out there, Jimmy. Go. <sighs> Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Shit. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in. <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you? Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! Everyone, get inside! I don't know, it's By time, not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. <sighs> He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house. And... Like I said, if you want, you can join my Discord and post something like the self promotion or some shit, like the image or whatever. But I'm not gonna click on your link, man, because I don't really trust you like that. Uh uh. -oh. Okay, it's gonna be okay here. Focus, stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm okay, I'm gonna turn this thing up and down. Between not... all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather. Alright. Uh, 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 uh. You should be able to post it in like the self promotion tab or like the art tab, wherever you want to post it at.
I mean, eh, not too bad. I mean, that picture is not really a good picture of me at all. I mean, it's like not a good picture at all. The font doesn't look too bad, I guess. I guess. Right. Well, I mean, I, like, in, using any of my picture, like, if you're trying to use my webcam as a picture, that is a terrible idea. They're not going to look good. <clears throat> so I won't even bother with that. But, and also, I just don't want my face to be my picture anyway. So that's, like, there's a reason why, like, I have, like, a little character. You know what I'm saying? If I want to use my face, I mean, I have my banner as my face. So I think that's nice. But, I mean, other than that, I don't really, uh... Shut up. Oh yeah, I should probably wrap it up here soon. Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and... Yeah, uh, what's up, Lid? What? <clears throat> Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, How no, chat. Out of all of us, you're not one. Everything okay? No. Looks just a motherfucking homie, you know that? I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to make the time for it. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I. Shut up! Fuck, I fucked up. Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Fuck. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Just some kids. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh. Yo, Steph. This kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. <sighs> Here, I'll check it real quick. Wrong thing. I hope you have a good, uh... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, but, well, you know... Are you like trying to like sell me something or something? Is that, like, is that why you're showing me this? Or is like you just do that because you just want to do that? The screen grab of that radio console is to send my visible for graphing. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. So what, are you just like practicing Photoshop or something? I'm practicing to do this professionally someday. Oh, okay. Alright. I was going to say, as long as you're not trying to sell me stuff, man, because I don't really want to... I'm not in the midst of buying anything. <laughs> <clears throat> and every time I ask people, like, because people, whoever ask, like, offer me to do overlays, they're just stupid. I don't even mean to say that, like, but, you know, just overall, they're just kind of stupid because they try to sell me, like, this MLG package kind of shit. And, like, the thing is... I don't fucking like that at all. Like, it's so cornball. It's like so corny. And it's just so cringy. Like, why the hell would I ever want that? It's all good. I'm so broke that I make broke with cringe. Man, ain't nothing wrong with that helmet. And that's why I don't even talk to most of the motherfuckers. Because I'm just happy with what I have anyway. It's just simple. I don't want nothing blocking my screen. I don't need all this stuff covering my screen. I just need something that shows the recent followers, subs, donation, bit donation kind of deal. And that's about it. That little bar that I have down there I think is good enough. <laughs> so if someone can make like a simpler, nicer design than that, I guess. Then you know, by all means I guess try to do something like that, but goddamn it, don't try to sell me this fucking uh this fake ass MLG shit. I don't want that. Alright. Folks, we're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trap kids out there. I gotta work morning in the morning, six hours to twenty minutes or so. So I'm gonna drop out of here. 
Hey, I appreciate you, but oh, no, it's a bomb. Have a great night, man. Intern? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you uh, nice stopping girl, by. A bit head in the clouds, you know. Not sure why we took on an intern. If you aren't following really already, you should you should follow. I'm doing the 24-hour stream and giveaway here soon. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully but if not, I completely understand. I'm getting ready for that 24-hour stream. Also, I appreciate you being here. Stuff. Her desk is downstairs. Her desk is downstairs. Might end this here soon. If you're still going to be raiding stuff, I might just raid you. I also love how the floor pattern right here is like supposed to be like the shiny kind of floor pattern. I just realized that. That's kind of cool. I'm picking up little Easter eggs, you know. I don't know how all the Need the key. I probably should have talked to Peggy about the key. Maybe I already walked past the key. I mean, overall, all the game looks really nice. Yeah, I think it's been really nice. It's been really entertaining. It's been really good. I mean, that one pizza bit got me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't think I would have gotten me, but it got me. Hey. <laughs> really good atmosphere. Why doesn't my door lock? Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Oh, why? What are we trying to do again? Carrie's friend Jeannie interns here. Go find her desk and see if there's anything that will Oh, it's that fucking... It's that desk that's, uh... Carrie and her friends have a plan for how to escape the whistling man. But they need us to pick who does what. So, find something that'll tell you about her friends. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah, I know where her desk is at. That little... I thought at first it was, like, Forrest's desk, but he's, like, the big shot celebrity guy, so... You have, like, a better desk, right? Well, fuck it. I might just go to the four-hour mark, you know? Just since I'm already into the three hour mark. So we'll wrap it up at the four hour mark. I just have to get some sleep for work. So I think tomorrow I work one to nine instead of two to nine. Oh yeah, wrong area again. It's all the way over here. Um, also, for anyone who's watching right now, my schedule is posted on Twitch. I didn't fucking, uh, I forgot to post it in Discord, but I'll be posting it here in Discord soon. Before I go to sleep tonight, I have to fucking, uh, upload one of those VODs, my most recent VOD. Then once that's done, download this VOD. I won't be able to upload this one while that other one's uploading because that takes a minute. I work in the uh, morning, blah. Well, I mean, I work in the, I mean, I, I'd rather work in the morning, honestly, and I get off early than work in the afternoon and get off late. I, I would much rather do that. Just because, like, yeah, you wake up early and it sucks, but you're guaranteed to get off on time all the time, no matter what. That's like, it seems like first shift is like the only shift where you get off on time. Second or third shift, you just never get off on time. And it really just has been getting to me. God damn it, it really just annoys the piss out of me. Like, you have no idea. <clears throat> Especially since, like, I have no, like, managers who just, like, who don't care or have any self-awareness or they're just, they're just silly. Like, I just, like, I don't even... Like, I, okay, I'll break up once. Here, I'm not doing, like, long, and I'll tell you a good little story here. So like, place I work at closes at 8 p.m. So around like 7.30ish or 7.40ish, which means we have about half an hour to like 20ish minutes to close. I like, I will clean, like I'll close the bathrooms down, the public restrooms and clean them. 
And so my one fucking like, my, he's not even really a manager. He's like a like a, a, a shift lead, I guess you would call it. So this motherfucker wants to go and talk to the manager about like, hey, it's, it's okay if we shut the bathroom down, like the clean up. And the one manager's like, no, you can't do that. He's like, yeah, we can't actually do it. So we have to wait until we're closing. And I just thought to myself, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, you stupid fucking idiot? Like, I really just, like, if I had, if I wasn't wearing this shirt and we weren't wearing the same uniform right now, I'd just straight up slap the fucking stupid out of you. I'm not really that violent. God damn it. It's just like, why would you even do that? Like, like I don't even understand. Like, why make your job harder? Like, I don't even understand you, you stupid fuck. You, oh, God damn. Like, you're just, and like, here's the thing. Like, if it was like an, like, if the place, if the store, if like the place I worked at was like open for like an hour or two, then yeah, I would understand. Don't close the bathroom. But like, if we're only open for like 20 or 30 more minutes, close the bathroom down, get them clean. Like, why even bring that up to anyone? Like, are you really just fucking stupid? Like, I don't... This is why I don't see you succeeding in anything. Like, I think you're just going to be stuck in your position. Because <laughs> you don't think like a leader. Like, you don't think like a manager, bro. Like, it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> I can't... The big dumb. Bro, this guy is so fucking silly. Like, he is the silliest motherfucker in the world. He over here, like, he, like, I remember this motherfucker, like, he wants me to empty out trash bags and replace them, replace them with new trash bags, when there's literally, like, one or two pieces of, like, paper towels in it. Like, if it was, like, a, like, you know, and these are 40 to 50 gallon trash bags, by the way. This isn't just, like, you know, a little rinky-dink office desk little trash can. This is like 40 gallon bags that has like two pieces of trash in that he wants me to throw away and replace with a new bag. And then some, and when I don't do it, he gets upset and he thinks that I'm retaliating. And it's like, no, it's not retaliation. I just think you're silly. And I don't see that, you know, I don't think we should be wasting bags like that. And then he's just like, but it's the company's money. Why do you care? And it's like, well, it's kind of like a, it's like a, I care about the environment kind of thing. <laughs> it's just like also the place we work at promotes about being green and healthy and good for the environment so like I think us just wasting bags is not good even if it's not it's like well you know while you're working with me you should just do it anyway so I'm like okay but I'm pretty sure if I, if like, if I said this in front of like the higher ups like hey this guy wants me to waste company property they would be on my side 100% all the time every time <laughs> They lo really love pushing you around. Well, he just has a little man complex. So I see why he does it. Like, it doesn't surprise me. Like, you have little man complex. You're weak, you're tiny, and, like, this is the only way you can feel big. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not, like, toxic masculinity, by the way. It's just, it is what it is sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this guy is, like, he's, like, five foot nothing. He doesn't have any type of, like, muscle. And he can't really do much. So, like, the only way he can feel big and strong is trying to be better than people and trying to be like you know the boss at this place because he's like one of those high and mighty christian people wow the irony let's be green and help the earth behind closed doors use all the trash bags exactly such a silly billy and i'm just like you know what man i guess i will waste trash bags just for you but i'm just gonna say every time someone walks by me that's a higher up than you i'm gonna say man i really love wasting trash bags in chats <laughs> i shouldn't say anything but what's his name's working? <laughs> He's my height. There's nothing wrong with being that height, by the way. Like, I'm just saying. But, you know, some people, they internalize that shit and they get bullied and they get picked on and it, and it really fucks with them. Um, your height shouldn't define, you know, what you're... But, you know, sometimes that really gets to people, man. And uh, that's just the, the way it is, honestly. People are just, like, mean sometimes, you know? I mean, I get it. I'm five one, but I don't think I have a drug check in the way that makes me feel bigger than others. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, hi, buddy. I mean, I get it. I'm five zero, but I don't think I have a exactly. I mean, like, you don't have to do these things to prove that you're like, you know, you're an adult and shit like that. Like, you're not a man or woman. You don't have to do that kind of thing. But there's some people who just internalize that shit and like, and that's why they fucking do the stuff they do. And like, that's why they some. That's why they try to be those high and mighty 
Christians who try to like promote all this nonsense that they don't really fully believe themselves or they try to be like the manager at a big office place or something and just like hey yeah buddy fuck you <laughs> My plan. Hey, the hype buddy. I'm like five a. L. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's normal size, though. I mean, you're like you're. I mean, fuck, man. There is no normal size, but I, I shouldn't say that. That sounds so fucked up. <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> There's no such thing as like a normal size. I'm, like I don't, I don't know. I guess there is an average height. You know, there is like an average male height. According to statistics and whatnot, but I mean, now you're the bully. <laughs> you're the bully. <laughs> Fuck, dude, I sound so fucked up right now. I'm like six one, dude. What can I say? I'm pretty. Uh, I've gotten pretty lucky, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I never hit. <clears throat> I haven't, and like, the thing is, like, I'm into tall women. But, like, it's just being 6'1, there's, like, really no, much, <laughs> there's really not that much women that are taller than me. I think my ex I dated before was, like, my same exact height. And it, like, freaked her to fuck out. She just couldn't, like, fathom it. It, like, broke her. I don't know. She would always just, like, I can't believe, I normally don't talk, I don't normally date guys as tall as me. <laughs> We're not the same height. I'm like an in, like I'm like oh uh, yeah. And she used to wear those fucking like those fucking goth boots that like make you a little bit taller. I don't know what this fucking thing. Those Doc Martin bullshit. I don't. <laughs> I sound like it. I don't know. Fuck man. <clears throat> I'm six one. That's how tall I am. I'm six <clears> one. <throat> <laughs> Truly a great investment. I would recommend them get some little charm, support them too. Wait, a little charm for what now? Crocs? Oh god. Well, you're tall. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm tall. For a while, I thought I was five eleven, and then like I fucking you know did a checkup thing kind of recently. Like, no, you're actually six one. I'm like, oh fuck. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Hey, look at that, dude. Everything's uh, looking up for me. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty neat, I guess. <clears throat> shit, dude. I need to read. I need to read some shit about this chick's friends. My bad. Actually, for every uh, for us, everything is looking up, but at us, <laughs> hell yeah. I was about to ask that too. Hello. How's the weather up there? <laughs> Pretty great, dude. I just think it's funny because that manager I work with, dude, because there's times where he just like, all right, dude, I, I, I like, I need you to do all this trash for me. He's like, you might need some help. And I'm just, I grab all the trash with my hands and just lift it up. And he's just like, oh, well, fuck, you're strong. <laughs> well, I guess you don't need myself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. I was like, I, I, if I needed your help, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not the one to be like, oh, I'm not going to ask for help. I'm going to ask for fucking help if I need help. <laughs> but like, come on, dude. How dare you? <laughs> Hell yeah, Nintendo. I'm glad you're here, homie. What's up? <laughs> I know what I want for my birthday. Gotta tell my family. What? Fucking uh, Crocs? <laughs> Are you Guess what? What's up, homie? Oh, that tells me nothing. That tells me nothing. Rock on, Gallus for life. Jimmy, JJ, Jimmy. Awesome tattoo idea. Jimmy. 
friendship quiz. This might work. Uh, most likely to be this is a peak mount ever. Not the Kyle Heather. <clears throat> most likely to win a worth for worst poker face. Cynthia, Scott, Chad, Tammy. Most likely end up in prison. Seth, Jennifer, Lisa. <laughs> what? The sir Crocs. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> You buy yourself some nice ass crocs. Treat yourself. You fucking deserve it. I thought about buying crocs, but then I just bought like, you know, flip flops. <laughs> I mean, cause like the thing is, I was like, you know what, why not get a pair of crocs? And it's like 60 or 70 bucks. I don't know, never mind. I'll just get some Nike flip flops. <laughs> I think that's what I'll just do. I don't know. I'm not cheap, by the way. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know about that. That's why I haven't bought any. Okay, I'm, I'm glad someone's on the same page. I'm like, if they were like maybe 20, 30, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I can get a Crocs. Why not? I'm like, 60, I'm like, oh, hell no. What the fuck? These things don't even provide, like, support or comfort. Like, what the fuck do <laughs> you want me to pay 60, 70 bucks for? It? Jennifer, I don't even know what I'm supposed to take from this quiz. I'm supposed to tally up the points? Oh, my God. I did it. I don't have it. Uh, uh, Heather's at five. Kyle? Kyle is at... Kyle only has one point. Seth is at three. Seth is at two. Seth is at four. Seth is at four. Five. Seth is at five, just like Heather. Oh, shit. This is fucked. My bad. But uh, I'm glad you met someone at Tindor. Hell yeah, congrats, man. Going to get some golf crocs. Oh, well, fuck yeah, dude. Flip flops, fuck though. I love flip flops. Exactly, dude. I got these cornball looking ones now. They have like the American flag pattern on them. They're kind of white trash. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's what I haven't bought. Using the, I hate flip flops. I can't flip without them flopping backwards off or off or something. They ain't flopping either. <laughs> it's like driving a stick shift over Tozy. It's five ten to drive. I love. <laughs> well, fuck yeah, dude. I'm not zooted. I'm trying to fucking make sure I don't make the wrong choice. I already killed so many people today. <laughs> it's so I'm supposed to pick what friend she should trust. Or who has, what's the better friend? But also I should probably read the fucking... God. <laughs> oh, that's so fucked up. Why can't I just make a note of this? Well, let me just look at this one more time. Oh, well, I have a better fucking light. Who wants to fucking use the actual whitey? There we go. Yeah, Heather's at fucking five. Seth's at five. Uh, Scott is at two. Well, actually, no, never mind. I fucked that up. Seth is actually at six, I think. Explain that. Um, yeah, there's three. Four. No, it's five. I have it at five. Okay. Hot David's at three. Yeah. Oh, shit. Thank you for the fucking raid. Yeah. What a fucking homie, dude. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, my man? Huh? 
You doing well? You better be. Or I'll find someone to... No, I can't say that. Shit. Um... <laughs> hey, Kaputz. What up, homie? Heck yeah, get in here, boyo. Thank you for shout out, Ulu. I actually have TF2 planned this week on my schedule. What's up, homie? So I don't know if I'm supposed to actually add up the points and then I just I'm decide who's the best friend or if I'm actually supposed to relate these questions to what the points were to actually judge their character. <laughs> I don't know if I'm thinking too deep or I'm not thinking like maybe I'm just like making it way harder than myself. <laughs> Most likely to peak Mount Everest. I mean that's a quite an accomplishment, right? That's something that takes dedication, skill, someone who's gonna fucking, that's a go-getter. And Hot David has nothing, he has his looks, which is gonna fucking fade. He'll never climb Mount Everest. And Kyle's a bitch. Let's be honest, anyone with a Kyle name is just a bitch. Flat out. Okay? <laughs> and Cynthia sounds like a cunt name. Um, Scott, every Scott I've ever met has been a weirdo. Okay? Um, every chat I've met has been a cunt, too, so. <laughs> this is, uh, quite the, this is quite the moral conundrum we're going through right now. <clears throat> but I was got, oh wait. <laughs> nah, dude, when I say weirdo, I meant like, there's this one Scott I know who was just a creepy little fuck who, like, he was, he was, like, you know, short, but he, like, just a creepy little fucking critter, like, I don't know, like a goblin or a fucking, he probably was a goblin, honestly, like, just a little fucking goblin, like, talking to these, like, underage chicks, and somehow the parents were okay with it, I'm like, ah, oh, you're fucking disgusting, you little fucking creature, you need to just scuttle back to the fucking shadows where you belong, or someone should just, like, hit you with their car or something. I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but, but goddamn, like this motherfucker is just like, ugh, fuck, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a bully, <laughs> okay? Hope you're doing well with my uncle, these clips are epic. Well, fuck yeah, I appreciate you being here, but, uh, do you pour cereal first or milk first? I pour my cereal first. I don't pour milk first. That's just that's I, that seems like psychotic to you. That was dark, boy. That wasn't dark, dude. I don't think that was dark enough. Listen here, man. You know, like I, I can't be friends with someone who's just like who defends that. Like I don't know, man. Like. <laughs> Who's just like, listen, man, the age of consent is 60. I'm like, oh, God, just get away from me. I don't want to be near you. Like, you're fucking sick. <laughs> and I don't even understand. Like, the parents were okay with this. I'm like, you're okay with your fucking daughter dating this fucking gremlin? This fucking critter? Are you fucking serious? Like, I'm not jealous. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, it just, you think people would be like, oh, God, like, why the fuck is this guy looking at, like, high school kids and shit like that? I was like, Cause this dude's like 19, 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? He's like 19 or 20, bro. Like, he's fucking getting up there. <laughs> I'm talking about like 15, 16 year olds. I'm not even talking about like 17, 18 or anything. Like, even then, that's still not okay in my book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just like, uh, I don't know, man. It's like him actually just sitting outside and waiting, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm pretty cool. I got a car. Let's go. Uh, it's like, that's just like, I don't know. That's what it like, what? I don't know. <laughs> but I probably should do. Everything you said in the last minute has been valid, I'm cool. Oh, okay, thank you. I, I'm, I'm just like, uh, let me fucking hear it. <laughs> You pour milk first and he was like, now it's my time to shine. Hell yeah, that was dark bully. <laughs> Everything you said, I was like, hey, that milk goes first because if you refill that fucking stream, you gotta pour it over the milk first anyway. It's okay, so why not the first time? 
I mean, I guess, man. Yeah, I told him he was crazy serial with him, though. <laughs> Hell yeah, the ginger. Yeah. I never considered refilling cereal into milk. Me either, dude. Like, I usually just drink the milk and then I pour my cereal back in the bowl and just pour more milk in it. <clears throat> Some of them. <laughs> For me, it's cereal. Spoon first, and that milk. I hate soggy cereal. For you, spoon before milk strong. <laughs> Brother, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Like, I feel like I'm so scared that I'm gonna get someone killed again. So far, Heather and Seth have the most fucking points. I wish I had like a little whiteboard I can draw on real quick, but I don't. I just write down these points. But it's definitely like Seth and Heather. I mean, Jennifer's at three. Oh, yeah, Jennifer's only at three. Scott's only at two. And I think Scott should be on negative five, honestly. No, I'm just <laughs> at least there's only one time, honestly. So I think it's between Heather and Seth, honestly. Well, I mean, you're most likely become an Olympic athlete. I think I'm just supposed to base it off these questions. I think I might be just doing ZTV. No, fuck it. We'll do Welcome it. Welcome back. You find anything this time? Yeah, I found our friendship quiz. My head says it. It grosses me out. That's why she was first. Good enough. Sorry, <laughs> so so good. But I'll tell you what. No, okay. Zero is super low. Zero first. Always. I usually just eat my cereal dry because I hate milk. Zero is cold oatmeal. Oatmeal is also soup. <laughs> That's good. And I hate flan and creante. Okay. Good old flan. Sorry. Um, I mean, certain cereals are good soggy, I think. Like, you know, sometimes getting, like, you know, fruity pebbles get a little bit soggy. It's kind of nice. Uh, it's flan. Flan, flan, bro. I don't care. Alright? <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit that <laughs> I'm not perfect, right? <laughs> I don't even fucking really eat flan or flan, whatever. I just, I think I've tried it once, and I'm like, ah, it's all right, I guess. <laughs> Never have it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like you know. I definitely wouldn't like you know grab a a tub full of it and just like god damn this is good it's just like oh yeah mmm mm, yeah yeah <laughs> that's alright I guess definitely won't have that again anytime soon but I mean it wasn't bad <clears throat> so you like deep fried butter more deep fried butter what's deep fried butter cereal is cereal deep fried butter <laughs> that sounds foul. <coughs> Excuse me. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? I yes, feel like I throw up. We've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. Okay. What's the first step? Okay, first things first. We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Oh, Heather all the way. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please, Come stop on. talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Let's Part get two. it, dude. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Um, Seth, that creepy piece of shit. Seth. Why not? People deep fry anything. The you just said, fuck it. Just put the fucking sizzle oh, on it. <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. It's, it's bits of butter with deep fry. I think the sound like karma was theirs. Did I ever guys show you one of my guilty pleasures? Here, I'll show you one of my guilty pleasures. Dude. There's this guy I watch. I can't want, I, can, I can't show you the whole thing, unfortunately. Here you know. Copyright stuff. 
Because there's a guy called, uh... <clears throat> I'll bring it over here real quick. There's a fucking guy called Ordinary Sausage. This man, uh, literally just makes anything into sausages. And I don't know why I watch it, but I do. I think it's just because of his voice. <laughs> And he just has like a weird voice. Can I just like play like a small <clears throat> four loco mouth or so? I don't know. Here, fuck it. I'll just like play a little bit of his voice. Yes, four loco and Malort. Four loco tweeted it out. They came up with this suggestion. Not for a sausage, but. See, that's his fucking voice. I don't know. There's something about it. <laughs> Stoner vibes. There's something about that voice he has that just uh, that gets me, I guess. I don't know why. It's not even about food. Like, I think is I don't even eat sausages like that. <laughs> I just think the dude's voice is fucking great. And I just like how he has a little rating system of Mark Ruffalo's. So he rates something out of, like, zero out of five, like, Mark Ruffalo's or some shit. I don't know. And it's just one of my guilty pleasures. It's something I like to watch. That's <laughs> This plan is impressive. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. Passion of sausage has to be in mind. For this one, we're trying to decide between. Yeah, exactly, dude. Who was it again? Ah, uh, David, Cynthia, and Scott. We should let her kill everyone and run away. <sighs> Hot data headers. Uh, most likely to escape prison. Definitely not fucking sky. Where the fuck is Cynthia at? Uh, where's Poker Face of War? That's uh, not gonna work for that. Hot David. I mean, I mean, I'm just gonna go with Hot David. Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you just spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. So I really hope okay, Hot David's not a poser. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts. <laughs> I can't have like no now more deaths on my conscience soon. I'm still haunted about that editor well, we that I accidentally <laughs> killed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's just. We tricked the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable moment? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. But who the fuck is Cynthia? So Tammy, Lisa, and who the hell is Lisa? Oh, there's Lisa. I have nothing to go off with Lisa. I have no clue. And Cynthia would definitely not be the best bet. Because she's like most likely to win the worst poker face. So. For the worst poker face, so. That could be like. Tammy. Yeah, Tammy, right? Tammy. Tammy, if you survive this, never do that British accent again. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. Mm -hmm. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be. Who have we got? Chad. Scott. Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Uh, um. Most likely to escape prison. No, well, I guess I'm probably gonna go with Jennifer. No, well, Jennifer's not on the list. Scott, Cynthia, Seth. Uh. Uh. 
uh, most likely to escape prison. Uh, I want to say Scott. I don't know if this is like actual in order, like, you know, yeah, I don't know. So I want to say Scott. Seth is not even on the thing. I don't even know where Chad comes into play on this. Uh, fuck it, we're going to Scott. Scott. I know we all love watching American Skid. Yes, I. <laughs> Also, shout out to all the 12, 15 people who are here right now working and watching. I hope you guys are having a great fucking night. Also, welcome to the stream if you're new. I'm Uncle Schmuckus, and it's nice to meet you. I'm a variety streamer. I play a bunch of games on PC, Switch, PlayStation. I play a lot of Dead by Daylight, um, Hunt Showdown. Impressive as hell, right? And just overall, just a lot of games. I like to do Nintendo shit too, so I try to do like one Nintendo thing like once a week or so. Stuff. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. No way. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, good luck. Don't die. All right, hit it. Good luck and Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go. Oh, please don't fail. I can't deal with this if I fail, soon. Well, fuck. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, no, his, his face is... The keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him for his... He got God. Oh, God. I don't think you understand, Carrie. I just made a basket. Focus. It's okay. His face got... Focus. Breathe. Breathe. Right. The van keys. Uh oh. She's in shock. We got him. Damn and it. Hot David should be back any second. Lockpicker's still working. Yeah. I'm not there. I'm not the key this way. I don't know. God, oh. hurry up, lockpicking. So, only lost one. I still believe. Keep going. I believe in you. You, you can still do this. Don't give up, Terry. Don't give up. Right. Right. We just gotta keep pushing on. Time to trap the killer. All right. Bait. Get into position. Oh boy. Everybody else. Hide. Well, I hope we made the wrong choice. I apparently made the wrong choice then. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. Ah. Oh. There he is. Ah. He's buying it. Ah. Oh no. Well, I don't know how many people. Yes, Heather. Quick, everyone to the van. I think we lost two people. Driver, take the keys. We're gonna have to ram it. 
Harry? Oh, what was that? Hey. Drive now. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 Well, I killed them all. Somewhere safe. I can make it home. Well, I guess she didn't die, I guess. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I I guess the plan was just It's my fault. Don't blame yourself. No, it's I need to get home. Hmm. Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Oh, uh, that was a... Well, oh, shit. Now, thoughts go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song. For the girl walking home in the dark. Oh, the chat box is going on. Oh, well. Oh, no. I'm not putting anything on yet. It's sort of this rocky. Dead air is a crime, Forrest. Well, the thing doesn't work. And we're putting this back on then. Thank you for the bits, Rocky. It means a lot to me. <clears throat> the voice line is pretty good. Almost hard to hey, listen to. Hard to listen comment. because it sounds so convincing. It actually sounds the chefs. Fuck yeah. How you hold up on the game? Um. Well, I'm really upset that I killed people. You know? The editor died. Um. What was after the editor? Murphy? Yeah, Murphy died. That's two. Um, and two teams died. So that's like... Man, Murphy, two teams. That's like four people. I saved like four people though, right? Or four people. I'm a little upset because I guess some of the things I just didn't understand or I misinterpreted like that last thing I kind of got most of the shit right but then I got some of them wrong so I'm like so there was something clearly I, I didn't get about this whole friendship thing whatever when you're ready shut the music off Forrest Nash here listeners we've got another caller live on 189.16 the scream what's on your mind caller? hey Forrest I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Wrong thing. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. 
I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. Oh. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider Damn. you a friend, my man. Thanks, friend. You talk a lot. You sure talk a lot. It's just passion, man. I, I got a lot of thoughts going on, you know? Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. I wasn't always roller yeah. Ricky. Back then, <laughs> things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad... Oh, I made 20 baskets. Let's that go. Stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time. Maybe if they want, you can do another try, trying to get Better a different angle. Or if they are down. To <laughs> I gotta go for a run where no one that dies, dude. Best years of my life. That's what I was trying to go for thought. originally. I was like, dude. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things After I saved so many people, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm doing pretty good. But then I got to the other ones. Well, the editor one was a mistake. That was an accident. I panicked because like a timed event came up and I thought I had to answer it right away. But I was like, no, shit. I fucking was supposed to like not fucking... <laughs> I just did it right away. I was supposed to like give it time but before I answered and then I got him killed by accident. <laughs> and then the Murphy thing, I just misinterpret the map. Like I thought the... He's around. So I thought when they said the corner, I thought they meant this corner, but they meant this corner. So I guess technically this guy would have been closer to here, and that's why he died. And then this, I just, I just under misinterpreted the whole friendship thing. I, 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 I'll fucking. You know what I'm saying? Please. <laughs> Well, I'm the shape, uh, welcome, Max. He's a good boy. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. Oh boy. The best dog a guy could ask. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. <laughs> what the? Hell? Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it should Damn. be done. Maxie loves the ring, man. Yeah, Joseph. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. Neighbors must love it. I'm just a great pair. Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity uh, to give back to the community. As you see, I'm trying to make the baskets. Man, all this talk is <laughs> for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Oh, okay. I love this one. You'll like this next song. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. This guy sounds yeah, like, I keep saying I mean. it, but he sounds like a roller skate dog. <laughs> Thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. No, man. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! <laughs> hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it. And, uh, okay, well. I don't know. <laughs> you were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? Oh, I After what he why. did, why let me go? 
So I guess it's a thing. We got bored. We wanted the uh, prince shoes. Got bored. I don't even know how to answer this one. I could say he got bored, maybe? We saw you as a victim. We want the pranksters. Maybe he wanted the pranksters. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I. Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did, why would he do Hey, thank you for the bits, Wicked. Why'd you I hope your stream of DVD is going well. These stupid hazing nights have to Damn, stop. Damn, the four hour mark. You did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Uh, is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. I was just playing this. So why? Because it's what I've always been. Mm -hmm. But when I you know what Carrie just you know, said has really got me thinking about what? I'm more masculine. The whistling man I'm left like, her I'm alone. More masculine why? Then there must be a reason. The guys when it comes like, to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of the process. Well, that actual counts, right? I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. You mean I can go around and explore and find epic Easter eggs? Ooh. There's supposed to be a hidden portal man. <laughs> I don't know anything about this game. <laughs> lavender honey spoons are really good, by the way. Like lavender honey spoons. Oh, hell yeah. I can try to find some, uh, some secrets. It's a screen. That's not a bad thing. Ugh, every time I see that map, I just hear mining. I don't see anything else to find around in here. You never know, honestly. God, I wish I could run. Laughing and honey are my two favorite, or two of my favorite parents. I'm talking for like a uh, tea, right? How do I think of an actual fucking piss puddle? Epic. Ooh, piss bottle. Epic. Oh, now I'm just pissed more than me. Uh oh, PP. <laughs> Tea, lotion, anything like that, very good there. Yeah, I do like lavender. Lavender's a pretty good smell. I think the shampoo and like conditioner I have is like lavender or something. See if there's anything like hidden. I'm not 
lot of good scenery there. What I have planned for uh, today, um, I forgot to post the schedule in Discord, but I have it on my t uh, Twitch. I was going to probably be doing some more Hunt Showdown tomorrow, because I was talking to Jamie uh, about playing, playing it with him for a little bit, for a big chunky while, and then Monday, Monday there's no stream, because uh, I work late. But like also, see I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, but Tuesday and Wednesday I have like big beefy boy streams, like the 12 hour streams. So like, so that's why like there won't be a stream Monday. So Monday I'll be like actually going to sleep and getting ready and doing uh, the streams for, uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday and stuff like that. I got some Dead by Daylight, Hunt Showdown, I got Diablo 4 planned. Um, I have this game planned too, just in case if, uh, I probably won't be able to finish it tonight, because like definitely at like the 5 hour mark is when I will have to wrap it up for sure. Um, but I'll definitely like, what I, so my plan is, if I don't finish this, I'll probably finish this Tuesday when I have my big beefy boy stream plan near the end. And if I beat this game early, then I might just start another game or something. I don't know. It depends on what game people want to see me start. I don't know what game I want to start, though. I've been thinking about Silent Hill 4, The Room, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Um, I think I already did Resident Evil Revelations. But I can do Revelations 2, maybe. Or I could do like maybe Hollow Knight or Shovel Knight. I don't know. My bad. I was only looking around for like little secrets, I guess. But for now. Fuck it, I guess we'll just go up here and uh, start this shit. I was gonna find like some secrets, you know. Oh yeah, I'm off Tuesday. Yeah, so Tuesday I'll be doing uh I'll be doing hunt in the morning if I'm not mistaken. I have to check my schedule actually. What do I got time? Tuesday I got Diablo and then Hunt Showdown. No, 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 my bad. Diablo, Dead by Daylight, and then Killer Frequency. And then Wednesday I got Mario Maker and Hunt Showdown. And I got Dead by Daylight planned Thursday. So I do plan on playing some Dead by Daylight Tuesday around 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. <clears throat> Dying Light 2. Hell yeah, Dying Light 2. I might tinker with this guy. I don't know. Depends on when I wake up, I guess. Because I definitely want to keep Mario Maker on Tuesday. Because I don't know. I might play more fucking Hunt. 
Tuesday morning or something. It depends on when I wake up, I guess. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or scratch that for us. We have a caller. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. You're through to 189.16, the screen. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Where should we go? Oh, yeah. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? I'm Peggy. Yes. Oh, I remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? No. On his wall stuff. But we don't have it. I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, of course. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house and miles from the station? It won't take a second to grab it. He's fast. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will, Forrest. Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. Oh, fuck. Uh, well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. I'm not doing it. <laughs> What's going on? On there? Oh, shit. Uh. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, yeah, you're I mean, right. is she serious about. <coughs> Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling Peggy. the truth. Oh. All right. Why don't you go? Uh. All right. I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. <laughs> wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh... You know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. <laughs> anyway, I'll hold the board down while you're out. That's Maybe great. We can get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The Screw. With me, Peggy. Oh, nice. The fire door. Locked tight. Oh, brother. Hmm. I've been rebook over my schedule before I crash and I also need to upload that shit to YouTube too. Or I might just wait till Monday. Oh, uh, that sucked. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Hello. Oh, damn. Of 
dogs behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. <sighs> Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, an elevator, or something. Uh-oh. I need to find a record. Am I missing something? Else? All right. <clears throat> Which window would she have thrown it out of? On the mattress. seen this anywhere. Ah, uh, fuse or something. That's a... Uh... Yeah, the other way you went. Oh, on the mattress? Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't know, it's really silly. Look, there's another fuse. Here it is! Long ride home. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. I was just guessing, honestly. Now I'm looking for some fuses. I'm guessing, that's... <laughs> those tiny fucking things. Oh my god. Oh, I had a little pattern. I just feel it. DC four out of seventy. Bingo. Again. All right, so what door open? Survive that fall? Yeah, I feel like we should close that. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clyde? Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, we just figure something out. Ooh. Oh, there's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, Power Station, Trailer Park, Hospital, Gas Station. This big old broke free, it's supposed to run down the hill. Keep checking behind me, you just get slim off there and tries to walk up behind me. Are there? Do you have the uh, record? Like in the pocket? Yeah, I do. I think he just puts it in his pocket or some shit. Uh, I'm Chuck Brody. I'm going to pop it up. It's like a fucking thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. fuck. And that's why he let that one chick go. Because he had a fucking leg in the way. He didn't want to fucking, uh... This is my to the that were attracted to the local power system. Very adequate. to be even very shy. Very distracted. Walking out one minute to see the big girl. A big girl is fucking out. Five deaths, six deaths, breaks fail on bus. She gets to see some of this place. Maybe this will be. Fuck, man. Industrial <laughs> size pocket, but not enough to carry all this important like hedge clippings and shit like that. The hedge clippings with uh, newspaper clippings. Fuck. This was a mistake. Oh, this was a mistake. Okay. I wasn't trying to knock that over. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Such a good song, folks. And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. <laughs> might be fire, the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire... It's 2.40 a.m. Not too far from my time, okay? Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. I just made by a I just carried the whole board up with me. The creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board, okay. names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And do you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target? That's right. And we've got to find him. You said there are four locations listed there, too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. What was the thing now? Anyway, man, I was trying to figure something. I don't know, man. Fuck, I thought it was someone else. 
Damn, super industrial size pocket. <laughs> but I guess that proves if he was able to carry the record up and the fucking board. How's it going? Uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? Oh, fuck me. Big wheel thing. I guess it's something to do with where the last inclusion of killer was. Well, I seen the killer in the alleyway not too long ago. And I know about Kim Walker, the doctor. That's like two things for Ken Walker. Huh? Festival, I think. The best place for the tune for the contract and what the power station. You know, Jim Gant, the ones with two years, Sean, they went through the shirts and talking about how many of these. Also, on the big wall, there's like a various construction of these. I mean, that's a maybe game. Yeah, there. Uh, Just for something for uh, that's not really this one, no. uh, let's see. I'm sure if that has already happened, right? Let me 
Well, I guess it should pop out, but it's hard to make this piece of action. They sold them and they went alive for three good, but I don't know if I'm joking, you do that again. Yeah, the car fee. I don't know. Uh, hope it doesn't take some hand. Oh, yeah, I don't need it. See the thing about so I think it would be like. say Ed Williams. I want to say maybe the power station? I'd say for what I'm getting from this. I mean, there's like the hospital, but... There's really nothing here that's like bad or more of so like good things, I guess. That auntie has a lot of bullshit piled on to him. Chuck Brody is like all about the donations and it's like injury and shit like that. It's from the big will, so I Something gives the power station, honestly. I guess that's a good glass. I think. Uh, yes, please. Sure. I think you should be methodical with this. Try grouping the notes by who they're about. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. So here's the thing about Chuck. That's not bad at all. This is just some hiring students from a power plant, which really doesn't seem too bad to me. That right there is more about like Kim, and that doesn't seem that bad. That just seems good. That's like. It's also nothing about a. Yeah, so I really think it is this uh, Aunt Williams guy at the power station. I hope I'm not wrong about this. How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Uh, I 
actually give me a bit longer? I wouldn't say it like that, but... Because I don't see nothing bad. I'm just fucking... And Rebecca, I don't even see a Rebecca anywhere. Okay, I don't see anything much of a... a Rebecca Allen. Okay, so yeah, yeah my bad. Please, I totally found out that it's been all done prior to the city and rest of the night after I'm going to get up and the first group to rescue me. So that's Rebecca Allen. So yeah. I guess I don't really... Uh, I think it's Ann. I mean, it, it might just be. This is all confused to me. Again. Like, am I trying to make sense of it? But I have a hard time processing it. This will totally make it twice. Take me twice as long because I was the one playing it. You think it might be who the killer is? Shows up like someone who's gotten uh, a lot of achievements and praise from town. Well, so I definitely know it's not Chuck Brody. Because Chuck Brody had an incident where his leg got fucked up. And the killer let that one chick go because her leg got fucked up. So he's sympathetic for people who have injuries. I guess that affect their career or it's going to fuck them up or some shit like that. So Chuck Brody's completely out of the situation. Rebecca Allen, the only thing I have on her is her reporting like a crime, like car break-in kind of syndicate thing. And I mean... I don't even really think this guy is even related to even car break-ins or like has, you know, would be the kind of person who would break in the cars because I think he has suffered an injury or something from that uh, Ferris wheel accident. Kim Walker, the only thing I have on Kim Walker is like this marriage thing, which is something that's kind of good. It's like, it's like a marriage kind of announcement invitation. That's like something you would keep to have fond memories of. And this is just like Kim Walker being a doctor, so I'm guessing she, you know, she got married and she accomplished her dreams as a doctor. Those are more so like achievements or some shit like that. So I definitely don't think Kim Walker is going to be like the next thing. That could be something to be jealous of, yeah. But like, the more focus is on this Ant Williams guy. There's like these articles about like, you know, the fucking Ferris wheel disaster. It fucking going off the hinges, causing a bunch of accidents. Which I think is what had caught, gave him this leg injury over here. Then this is talking about the fucking investigator blames two engineers contracted the local power station, the engineer Ant Williams and the junior engineer Sean Everett. And that's the bad thing about Ant Williams is he was like the lead engineer, so the guy probably put all the blame on this dude. You know what I'm saying? And then like it's just like and then there's another thing at this like convention or something where they're like bragging about inviting this guy who was uh, responsible for the fucking disaster in 1972. So that's why I feel like it's definitely going to be like Aunt Williams at the power station. That wouldn't be the trailer park. I mean, who the fuck is that? Because <sighs> I don't even know which one of these people would even be at the trailer park. And like. I don't even know. The hospital. I mean, Kim would be working at the hospital. But, like, why the hell would we have a thing with Kim, I think? You know what I'm saying? The gas station. I don't know. Diary of a car thief is out of the Gallows Creek for a new life in the big city. She stole our cars and she stole our uh, time and money in our rear. Uh, hmm. Christine's gas in the pair. Yeah, 
I can't wait to go with Aunt Williams at the fucking power station. That's what I'm thinking, man. I hope I'm not wrong. How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? The power station. Okay, I'm dialing. Uh, one moment. I hope I don't get this wrong. Forrest, I'm through to the power plant, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. What? Then who? Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? Oh my god. The call board. It... I... One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Oh, fuck. Just let me... Gonna fuck that. I'm Hold gonna on. take us yeah, off air for a moment. moment. Peggy, what's happening in there? Peggy! I'm back. He blew up the gas station forest. Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. The fire department is useless now, as you know. What? And, uh, I don't even... The only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you... You've got to say something on the radio. You have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Gallows Creek. I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh... The gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone, stay safe. Oh, gee, I am honestly lost. Stay inside and. I mean. Oh, just bring us into some music, Forrest. There was no one at the gas station. He just blew up the gas station. Uh, you play a radio host, and then, like, uh, there's this murder going around, and you, you, like, you're a radio host of a small town, and there's, like, this murder going around killing people and shit like that, and so the 911 dispatch, like, the police station, I guess, is so small, it's all fucked up, but they have all the 911 calls going to you, the radio host, and everyone that calls in, you have to try your best to help them survive and whatnot. And so, like, you have to, like, put clues together and put shit together to make the people survive. They're not supposed to die. I don't think anyone died right here. I'm just trying to understand. I don't see anything about a... None of this fucking shit that says anything about a gas station besides that one about, like... Like, none of this even makes any sense. I guess Chuck Brody injuring his leg, maybe? Because, I mean, that's why he, like, because here's the Chuck Brody thing. 
is asking for donations for his fucked up leg. They're pretty much donating him lottery tickets so he can win the lottery. And I'm guessing he won the lottery and bought the fucking gas station. And that's what, like... I don't know, because earlier that doesn't even make sense, man. Like, I don't even understand, because, like, earlier... He let that chick, like, like, survive with the injured leg, and this, of course, referencing to do with the injured leg, so I thought maybe he felt sympathetic for that guy, so he wouldn't be going for that guy. But I guess since the guy won the lottery, that doesn't make him feel sympathetic, so I don't really... Brother, I don't even know. I mean, like, I don't know. Sure. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. Yeah, that's really good. What are we doing now? There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Ah, uh, I don't know. Is this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. So if you just say shut. Hey, Forrest. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Why can't I just pick this up in my inventory forever? Oh, there's a cassette thing, uh... Uh, 
that first tape you found. And there's still more I can do here. This up. I'm gonna take it with me. Forrest, you should listen to that first tape you found. Uh, I will. How do I do that? I don't know. One thing, it'll show me a tape player, but it's supposed to be in this room, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. I can't move any of these things off the shelf. Thank you for doing that, Tom. Is there a guy just missing on the bed? No, I'm fine. Oh, there is one. For some reason, that looked like a fucking TV. Like a little TV. <laughs> I'm the silliest fuck. I don't know why, I just like completely ignored it. He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. What else is hidden down here? Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, oh, then. Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Oh, this one. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is Because the plan is super efficient, I don't think that. I wonder if I see it last month, too efficient. Okay. God damn. Almost five hours strong. Yeah, this is probably where I'm going to be wrapping it up, uh, unfortunately, just because I do have to get some sleep to work. Tomorrow's probably gonna be a long ass day. fucked up as I could have uh... <clears throat> just made saves <coughs> and then go back and fix my choice. I guess it would have been fun if I did that, you know. But fuck, I had an absolute blast fucking tonight playing this game. It was pretty fucking fun. I can't wait to finish it Tuesday. Uh, since I put almost five hours into it, I should almost be done with the game because I think people are saying I only took them like six ish hours to beat this, if I'm not mistaken. A little less, a little more. Ooh, but 
<sighs> I hope everyone enjoyed the stream. I appreciate the fucking raid, Ulu, and uh, Steph with the fucking bits, Rocky with the 100 bits. You guys are actually fucking sweethearts. Um, I hope your stream went well, Steph. If you're still streaming, I'll raid you. Coming in tonight, uh, Nintendo. I hope to see you in future streams, homie. I hope we can play some more games together. Uh, oh yeah, thank you for uh, Solaris, I guess. For, um, not Solaris, but I mean Solaris, but for rating and, uh, and the Photoshop thing that you're sharing in the Discord. That was pretty nice of you. Uh, but yeah, um, I got a stream planned tonight around 10 30 ish. Some hunch showdown. I should be playing with Jamie Smash TV if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then there won't be a stream Monday. Tuesday, I got Diablo 4 planned in the afternoon, DVD later, and then beating this game. And then once I finish this game early, I'll probably swap to something else. Um, either start a new single player game, or I might play more hard. I don't know. Tuesday. Ugh. Wednesday, I mean, I have Mario Maker and fucking Hunt, so I probably won't plan Hunt Tuesday night. Probably another single player thing. I'll let you guys fucking know. Good night, Uncle. Get some sleep. Stream it was a really nice today. The game was fun. Fuck yeah. Um, if Stephanie's still streaming, I'm gonna raid her. Yeah, we're gonna go raid Steph. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna probably lay down. I'll probably start downloading that video, or not downloading, upload that video to YouTube. Oh shit. Mm. Good night, Tom. Good night, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed the fucking stream. And uh, I will see you guys tonight for some Hunt Showdown. Uh, go show Wicked some fucking love. She's an amazing, awesome person. She's one of my mods, probably one of the best mods besides you, Tom, and everyone else. Uh, because show her some love. She's playing some DVD. Which I plan on playing later on in the week. Uh, bye bye, my little baby. See ya. Peace out. <laughs>